NASA's Artemis 1 Orion spacecraft leaves Moon's orbit to head home. Orion has had a successful and nominal 1 minute and 45 second distant retrograde orbit departure burn, Farine announced during the agency's broadcast of the burn. The spacecraft's solar panels could be seen gently rocking back and forth on NASA television's live broadcast as a tiny Earth glowed in the background. Welcome back to the Space Gaze. Before we proceed, kindly subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated when we release new videos. Without further delay, let's dive in. Orion now begins its 10-day trek home. If all goes according to plan, the capsule will splash down in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California on December 11. NASA and the United States Navy have already begun training for the recovery operation that will mark the end of the Artemis 1 mission. The burn with the Orion spacecraft's orbital maneuvering system engine occurred at 4.53 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The 6,000-pound thrust hydrazine-fueled engine fired for 1 minute and 45 seconds, enough to nudge the spacecraft out of its distant retrograde orbit around the moon, where it's been flying since November 25. The maneuver was expected to change Orion's velocity by roughly 310 miles per hour, 454 feet per second, 498 kilometers per hour. The orbit departure burn was the fourth of five main engine firings the Orion spacecraft will execute on on NASA's Artemis 1 mission, a test flight of the agency's new deep space capsule and heavy lift rocket before astronauts strap in for a trip around the moon on Artemis 2, scheduled for late 2024. NASA plans to land astronauts on the moon, beginning with Artemis 3, debuting a commercial moon lander derived from SpaceX's Starship rocket program. Orion launched atop NASA's massive space launch system, SLS, rocket in a fiery display on November 16, kicking off the space agency's highly anticipated Artemis 1 moon mission. The mission is the first in the agency's Artemis program, which is aimed at establishing a sustainable crewed lunar outpost near the moon's south pole by the end of the decade. The first Artemis mission was intended as a test for both the SLS vehicle and Orion spacecraft to ensure that both are flightworthy and safe to carry human crews into deep space. If Artemis 1 goes as planned, the next mission, Artemis 2, will launch astronauts into orbit around the moon in 2024. NASA will then return astronauts to the moon no earlier than 2025 with Artemis 3. The additional tests involve longer duration firings of the auxiliary engines on the Orion spacecraft's service module, supplied by the European Space Agency and Airbus. The spacecraft completed a 95-second firing of the auxiliary engines Wednesday, far exceeding the 17-second duration of the mission's previous longest burn of the smaller thrusters that surround the main engine. Chris Edlin, Deputy Manager for NASA's Orion Integration Office, said one of the goals of the longer duration thruster firing was to verify thermal models and observe how the plume and heat from the thruster exhaust affects the four solar array wings on the service module. The Orion spacecraft is designed to normally fly with its tail pointed toward the sun. That's the best orientation or attitude to keep the spacecraft thermally balanced and maximize power generation from its solar arrays. The spacecraft can veer as far 20 degrees from its tail to sun attitude. But for Artemis 1, mission managers planned more conservative limits to keep it within a 2 by 4 degree box. Adlin said mission controllers in Houston commanded the Orion spacecraft to change its attitude to different parts of the broader 20 degree box to measure changes in the temperatures of various components on the vehicle. It's probably not the most glamorous part of spaceflight, but heaters and analyzing your thermal performance of your spacecraft is very important because, as you can imagine, you don't want any valves to seize up in the cold of space or have propellant lines or water lines freeze and potentially burst, Edelin said. So it's very important that we get good data on the thermal environment in these different attitudes or orientations of the spacecraft. Other bonus objectives for the return trip to Earth include testing to see how the opening and closing a valve affects a slow and expected leak rate in a pressure control assembly in the Orion propulsion system. Another extra test will demonstrate the Orion spacecraft's ability to change its orientation at a faster rate of up to 4 degrees per second, which it will need to do on the Artemis II mission with astronauts on board. 
All that is telling us about the performance of the thermal systems, about the camera systems, about the navigation systems, so we can know how is this going to work. Scoville said in a press conference Wednesday, another added task will be a test of a so-called three degree of freedom attitude control mode that may allow the spacecraft to conserve more propellant. The Orion spacecraft is designed to accommodate a crew of four astronauts in deep space for up to 21 days and can fly longer missions when docked to Gateway Mini Space Station NASA and its international partners plan to build in orbit around the moon. The Orion crew module, where astronauts will live during lunar expeditions, was built by Lockheed Martin. NASA awarded Lockheed Martin the contract to develop the Orion spacecraft in 2006 under the umbrella of the agency's Constellation Moon program, which was canceled in 2010. NASA kept the Orion program alive through two major restructurings of the agency's deep space exploration efforts, first during the Obama administration, when Congress and the White House agreed to pivot NASA's focus to a human mission to Mars, with an interim crewed expedition to an asteroid. The Trump administration shifted NASA's exploration program back to the moon. NASA dubbed the moon program Artemis, naming it for the twin sister of Apollo in Greek mythology. Through it all, the Orion program survived. NASA committed $14.2 billion to develop the Orion spacecraft from 2012 through the end of this fiscal year, September 30, plus an additional $6.3 billion spent on the program in the prior decade under the Constellation program. That comes to $20.5 billion over the course of a decade and a half of work. Engineers have also seen fluctuations in coolant flow in a thermal control system loop and determined that is likely caused by a gas bubble in the system. A computer also reset when it was hit by space radiation, an expected occurrence on a deep space mission. The record was previously set on NASA's Apollo 13 mission, which reached a distance of 248,655 miles. 400,171 kilometers from Earth when it looped around the far side of the moon with a three-man crew in 1970. Apollo 13's moon landing was aborted when one of its oxygen tanks exploded on outbound journey from Earth, and the spacecraft steered onto a free return trajectory that took it farther from Earth than any of the other Apollo missions. After Thursday's 105-second main engine burned to leave the distant retrograde orbit, the moon's gravity will pull the Orion spacecraft toward a high-speed flyby just 79 miles, 127 kilometers, from the surface on Monday, December 5. The Orion main engine will fire again at 11.43 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 16.43 GMT. For 3 minutes and 27 seconds, the spacecraft's longest burn on the Artemis 1 mission. The return-powered flyby maneuver will aim Orion toward its splashdown point in the Pacific Ocean. The spacecraft will jettison its European service module just before re-entry, then perform two dips into the atmosphere to bleed off speed before deploying parachutes for splashdown off the coast of San Diego on December 11. That's all I have for you guys for today. If you liked watching this video, please make sure to click the like button. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so that you may be notified when we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.